Bell system of Franke composed with alimentary canal and associated glands. Alimentary canal is a long tube-like structure and that is reduced in the carnivorous animals. Here amphibians like frogs are also considered as the carnivorous animals. In that animals generally alimentary canal is reduced. So it is composed with alimentary canal and associated glands. So alimentary canal is a long straight tube-like structure and coiled at some specific places. So here that is reduced I said as I said that here the reduced why because it is reduced means here carnivorous animals does not contain long tube like structures and it is reduced in a short tube like structure and here that is we can say that alimentary canal is composed with so many of structures here we can identify so many characters like alimentary canal begins with mouth and ends with cloacal aperture and here cloaca will be present so here Alimentary canal is a long straight tube like structure I said and coiled at some places here it begins with mouth and mouth leads into the esophagus and esophagus leads into the stomach and stomach leads into the intestine and intestine opens into the rectum here large intestine is absent in the place of that rectum is present and rectum finally leads into the cloaca finally opens outside to the cloacal aperture I said that alimentary canal and associated glands so your associated glands will be present associated glands are various structures here that is liver gallbladder uh, gastric glands intestinal glands will be present for the purpose of digestion of food let us see what are the characters are associated with alimentary canal so alimentary canal generally composed with so many characters like mouth pharynx esophagus stomach intestine rectum and finally opens outside through the cloaca so these are all the characters associated with the alimentary canal so first of all we would like to explain about the here mouth so mouth is a wider anterior part so which opens into the buccal cavity or oral cavity that leads into the esophagus to a specific character is present here that is pharynx so pharynx opens outside through the buccal cavity and pharynx opens into the esophagus so between the esophagus and buccal cavity or oral cavity there is a specific structure is present that is known as a pharynx so here mouth leads into the buccal cavity and which leads into the esophagus twist and esophagus is a small tube like structure and which is opens into the stomach it is a small tube like structure in carnivores and most like amphibians so that opens into the stomach here so stomach is a small sac like structure which present in the anterior upper portion of the body cavity so there we can identify the small distensible sac like structure called stomach so on the wall of stomach so many of glands will be present here that anterior part and the posterior part of stomach included on the wall of stomach include so many of glands like multicellular glands as well as unicellular glands will be present so multicellular glands generally composed with specific glandular secretions called pepsinogen enzyme will be produced and whereas unicellular glands which are located on the wall of stomach that secretes hydrochloric acid to digest the food molecules and here the stomach which is divided into two basic parts anterior part and the remaining part is known as posterior part so anterior part of stomach is known as cardiac stomach and whereas the posterior part of stomach is known as pyloric stomach so here between the esophagus and anterior part of stomach include a specific character is present to regulate the movement of the food from the esophagus into the stomach and stomach into the esophagus so that character is known as a cardiac sphincter a specific sphincter is present to regulate the food from the esophagus into the stomach that is the, the specific character anterior part of cardiac stomach so that is cardiac sphincter present between the esophagus and anterior part of the stomach called cardiac stomach and whereas the posterior part of stomach here that is also known as pyloric stomach so between the pyloric stomach and intestine generally pyloric stomach leads into the small intestine here between the small intestine and pyloric stomach there also a specific sphincter is present that sphincter is known as a pyloric sphincter which regulates the movement of the food from the posterior part of the stomach into the intestine and here the posterior part of pyloric stomach leads into the small intestine intestine of frog so that is arises from the posterior part of stomach called pyloric stomach so here intestine is the longest part of alimentary canal 
and which is divided into three parts anterior part medial part and the posterior part anterior part of intestine is known as duodenum medial part of intestine is known as ileum and whereas the posterior part of intestine is known as rectum so your large intestine is absent so in the place of that rectum is directly arises from the ileum and that is converted into the rectum here so rectum finally opens into the cloaca and your first part i am taking that is duodenum and in the part of intestine is known as duodenum and duodenum is connected to the pancreas as well as as well as gall bladder so from the gall bladder it receives the bile juice a specific common duct called or common bile duct so next part that is the duodenum which leads into the ileum that is the middle part of intestine so on the wall of ileum small finger like structures or four like structures will be present they are known as villi so generally villi increases the absorptive surface area of the intestine and finally opens into the rectum that is the posterior part of intestine and it is a small sac like structure is present in the posterior part of the rectum and rectum which leads into the cloaca and the, what is the importance of rectum here so rectum reabsorbs the water from the water of the water molecules present inside the fecal matter that will be reabsorbed by this specific character called rectum associated glands of frog so associated glands of frogs are included with the three types of glands so here three glands are mentioned here first one is liver and second one is pancreas and third one is gastric glands and intestinal glands a liver so liver is the reddish brown structure and which is also known as multi lobed structures and where it is located you see it is located very close to the heart and the lungs so there we can identify the liver and liver generally participates in production of bile juice it cannot produce any specific enzymes and hormones but here it produces a specific greenish alkaline fluid called bile so that bile generally stored in the form of small sac like structure called gall bladder so whenever it is required by the digestion of food molecules here that is here whenever it is suppressed or compressed then it produces bile into the duodenum through a bile duct so through the duct bile enters into the duodenum to digest the food molecules here so liver can produce the bile juice and which stores inside the gall bladder and the second part pancreas so pancreas is the branched elongated pale yellow like structure or gland so that generally produces pancreatic juice to digest the food molecules here it is connected to the duodenum and whenever the food is comes into the duodenum part then the pancreatic juice will be stimulated and the pancreatic juice will be entered into the duodenum to digest the food molecules so by that process food will be digested and intestinal glands as well as gastric glands so intestinal glands and the gastric glands also participate in the production of enzymes and hormones to digest the food molecules they are located in the gastric glands are located in the wall of small stomach and whereas intestinal glands are located on the wall of intestine so that also generally produces enzymes and hormones to digest the food molecules when our food is comes into the intestine so after that it comes into the rectum from there it will be released outside in the form of smaller pellets so that how the food will be digest the frog so frog generally considered as the carnivorous animals it may take insects or small worms or molluscs animals etc will be taken by the frog into the mouth so when all the food enters into the mouth so mouth from the mouth it enters into the buccal cavity from there opens into the that leads into the pharynx from there enters into the esophagus and from the esophagus it enters into the stomach so on the wall of stomach specific glandular parts will be present and here on the wall of stomach multicellular glands as well as unicellular glands will be present so multicellular glands produce pepsinogen enzyme to digest the food molecules and whereas unicellular glands produces hcl to maintain the balance of acidic levels in the stomach region and also sometimes unwanted bacteria or virus etc will be entered into the food molecules that also killed by killed by the production of hcl and by that it enter the food will be partially digested in the stomach and enters into the duodenum or intestine so here duodenum is connected to the pancreas as well as gall bladder so gall bladder generally stored with pancreas also connected to the duodenum to digest the food molecules pancreas produces pancreatic juices 
and from there the pancreatic juices enters into the duodenum through a specific duct called hepatopancreatic duct so by that the food will be completely digested and from there if the food is excessively taken then the surface area of the small intestine or intestine part will be increased or surface area will be increased by the specific structures called villi they are located on the wall of middle part of the intestine called ileum and from the ileum the food will be entered into the rectum and rectum is the wider part on the wall of rectum rectal papillae will be present that reabsorbs the water if any water molecules are present in the after digested food the water molecules will be reabsorbed by that specific cavity called rectum and finally enters into the cloaca and releases outside through the local aperture so this type of process will be taken to digest the food molecules which are taken by the frog through the mouth and finally digestion will be taken place after digestion the food will be released outside through the specific structure called cloacal